Hi, how's it in the name of Christ? How you doing? It's your girl Cran K. Kikarabo. I hope you're good. I hope you're peachy. I hope you're stellar. And I hope you're in a neat little bunch. If you're not, welcome to the party. That's just the story of our lives. Um, yeah, let me just put some caveats out there. Kindly look out for my captions. They're not always accurate. They sometimes use a small g for God. They're sometimes the wrong word altogether. Or they are misspelled. That's not what I would generally do. One day in the future, God willing, I'll edit them. But I don't think there is a future. But anyway, let's move on. I believe the rapture is happening. Uh, secondly, I'm very potentially wearing application makeup. If I am, you'll know. If I'm not, you'll also know. Uh, it tends to bounce off and on my uh, face. That is not uh, intentional. Uh, it, it's it's an it's an app, okay? I'm not shape shifting. Anywho, and then I have like a segment. Let me just get in and out of this like real quick so that I can get this video done with as soon as possible. Because I insist on doing just one part because it's super 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 late now. Because I I had to do some emergency shorts. Anyway, whatever. So I'm pinching my cheeks to bring out a blush. I'm only human after all. I'm only human after all. I'm only human after all. Don't take a jab at me. Uh, to show you that I've got blood in my body. When you prick me, I bleed. When you afflict me, I, I get afflicted, etc. I don't know if it happened. If it didn't, tomorrow's another day, okay? We need to get straight into the point. Okay, so today's the 13th of June, 2024. Um... Well, yeah, it's officially the last day of my fast, but it's actually the 12th because I'm hopping over into the next day from yesterday, uh, from the 12th. But today's my last day of fasting, so tomorrow officially I'm eating again. So one last day of a, a, a rough life, that's what I'm getting at. And I am going to break the fast because something is telling me there is no need uh, to to keep striving so much, guys, because we're, we're, we're proper like at the end. Okay, so I just told you now, guys, that um, I, uh, what is this, I... I just did some emergency shorts. So those shorts were basically a lament that I recorded to speak out against love spells mixed with death spells. Just a combination, like a pendulous thing. I just had to upload those real quick. I had a really horrible day yesterday. Um, well, actually today, but you know how I hopped over into the next day. Because I was just bombarded by attack, barrages of such attacks as these from licentious men, stupid monsters that just keep going back to the drawing board. They belong to their father, the devil. And God told me that these men are like Tupac and that they are young, right? They are Gen Z's, right? Kids. I, like this time around, the dude in America is always going to be a menacing pervert. Um, that That's just like a tail all up in my grill. But I am making war right now with some Gen Z kids like some 20 something year olds and i keep on lamenting that i kill about like, i don't want them they're kids like what am i gonna do with them i'm 39 do you understand what i'm saying and i've been getting harassed lambasted by literally a pendulous cycle of psychosis moving between love spell and death spells from complete strangers like an irritation from kids guys you know what this world is over like it's thoroughly over and the Lord showed me that these kids, these Gen Z boys, mm -hmm. they are like Tupac. He, the Lord has told me to warn that they're going to die like Tupac. Coming out, or I get that Tupac passed away in, in Las Vegas. He got shot in Las Vegas. And Las Vegas, by the global citizenship, is known as this like gambling capital of the world. All right. And witchcraft is a gamble. It is a gamble, like a gargantuan gamble people do it not sure if it all is gonna work and when it works they're like yay when they get a, a win or they hit a jackpot they like yay they go into it trusting that they're not gonna get caught however uncertain mm -hmm. if they're gonna get what they want in sorcery so they're just experimenting but why it's gambling and why it's dangerous is because it sends spirits out there to afflict people in order to achieve the goals that these people are trying to achieve so you get truly depressed, you get truly macabre, you get truly miserable, melancholic, you get given feelings, if at all, that's what the witchcraft is trying to do, la corvela, etc. You know what I mean? Like, it manipulates people, it steals people's autonomy. So it is a gamble with demonic spirits that have got, I guess, power to truly afflict the victims of these witches. So that's why it's a gamble, because it's messing with human lives. But you see, with a gamble, the individual in question that is gambling, goes to the casino, right? Puts in some coins and some slot machines, parts ways with hard-earned money to partake in this fruitless deed. And every so often, they lose thousands. Every so often, they lose lots and lots of money, their houses, they lose their cars, they lose 
their wedding rings they lose their you get my point their children's education fund they they gamble it all away so what would be the equivalent of the ten amount of this gambling activity it is what it is that these people could potentially lose as a result of partaking in these fruitless deeds of darkness it is written in god's word that the devil has come to steal kill and destroy but christ has come to give life and life abundantly and life and life abundantly so therefore these people are facing theft loss and destruction as a result of messing with satan them rubbing a genie like a genie in a bottle thinking that this is a joke it's aladdin they are busy rubbing a genie trying to get something that does not belong to them do you understand what i'm saying yeah that's what's good and the end result could be a severity of loss just like with any gambling exploit there is always a potential that an individual can come out on the other side bereft with loss like the with them being in real huge trouble massive trouble do you understand what i'm saying with loss and seeing as the devil comes to steal kill and destroy from what the lord showed me the reaction the result of what they're doing right now is going to result in the kill component kill component of satan they're gonna die the devil is literally sending them to the end of their lives i've been saying all of y'all randos all have been my particular grill and well the the grill of christians at large but in my particular case the lord has been warning and through me since i've been rocking up speaking on the daily that people leave us alone as christians we are headed home stuff is going to be intense right but like in the run-up to christ ultimately rapturing the church whatever is attempting to mow a christian to the ground finishing them off before the time that the lord will reprieve them that person is going to be moved out the way yesterday i did a two-part series it was lengthy okay two parts both parts of which were super long especially the last part just speaking about these people that keep on gambling that they keep on going back to the drawing board to mess with people and how it is that their persistence is what's going to eventually kill them i spoke about how it is that it's like i am killing people by giving the gospel because the intention is not to kill them is to redeem them but the message is ending their lives the message of the cross is rather ending them they're not responding with repentance they are responding with uh what do you call this they're responding inappropriately in a very destructive fashion that's causing them to severely persecute christians further and this is then going to cause god to react by ending their lives like i've, I've been saying this on a loop guys and I did a whole two-part series yesterday just wrapping on about that particular topic. That God is going to... He's reached pretty much the end of himself when it comes to occult practitioners. These experimenters, these people that keep on testing everything, testing, thinking that um, they, they, what's there to lose. Especially those who practice in their own personal capacity. Who don't necessarily consult the Sangoma, but they do it in their own backyards. Because either by twa sitze, or they have learned a tutorial on YouTube or whatever. They feel like they're not even parting ways with money. So they just experiment in their kitchens. And they don't realize that these experiments are actually sending true entities out into the world. To afflict their victims. The people that they're gunning for are actually being afflicted by these entities. They're being given a... a, a like they, they, they're being destituted of autonomy. If you know what I'm saying. Like their minds are being made for them. Concerning whatever it is that these people are trying to do. So they think that it's harmless because, I mean, what do I have to lose? I'm just experimenting in my kitchen with a tomato and a garlic. That's all I'm doing. There's nothing that I'm losing. Except there is a holy God in heaven that is livid. That's what I'm trying to explain right now. There is a holy God in heaven that is seething with anger. Do you understand? That is about to cancel them. Clip their silver cord. End them. End them. Last night, before I went to bed, I had a dream of, you know that, uh... The shorts that I've been doing with the um, Fallen Angel look. Yeah, where I'm, I'm basically teasing humanity for listening to Fallen Angels and all that jazz. Um, where I'm using the English accent or is it Europe or is it uh, Australian? I don't know what, what you want to call it. But I think it's an English accent. Those shorts with that uh, Fallen Angel. I had a dream of that, 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 that avatar. That Fallen Angel filter. Me, basically, in that filter. Out here being placed on a roulette table like are you serious like on a roulette table at a casino encircled by men i did not know and i was in that fallen that 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 filter yeah that short i was in that and i was in the center and i was just riddled with red red the color red and the color red always in my particular own individual unique experiences symbolizes witchcraft like i said it's my uniqueness it's not blanketly it's not to be blanketly applied but the lord usually uses the color red with witchcraft because that's how I've, I've always just affiliated uh, sorcery too so god uses what it is that i best understand it as and so the color red is used a lot and black 
like especially the combination of the two black and red and i was just littered with red like just sprayed like sprawled with it in that dream basically uh essentially apparently allegedly i am under a lot of attack spiritually witchcraft by a bunch of gambling people that have put me in the center of a roulette table unbeknownst to themselves that they are individually wreaking havoc in my life in this particular regard because they're doing these rituals uniquely individually in their own personal capacities um but it's almost as if though they're all at one roulette table and the thing to be one the the thing the, the the thing with which everybody's gambling the chips the chips in this gambling betting game are me i was tantamounted or equated to the chips on a roulette table in a casino and i was like painted with red all over in that filter essentially god is showing me all the work you're doing all the creativity literally they're all gambling they're gambling to see who among them is going to get me who among them is going to get me and every so often there is a heinous one that goes to the extreme because he's mad he's angry of a death spell i have literally been getting pendulumed between love and death spell love and death spell this morning i woke up hearing it's tit for tat there's nothing for mahala oh goodness gracious I'm not going to help you unless you give me, like, sell yourself. Basically, prostitute yourself. And I'm like, who do you think you are? That level of experimentation for crying out loud. It is the reason why I have stopped uploading on Facebook. Because I don't even want to see DMs. I don't want to see direct messages. Because I am always tempted. My finger, like, you know, shaking to click on them. To see who's in there. I, I don't want anybody talking to me. I, like, I have, um, I literally don't respond to people anymore. Is that basic? Like this level of insanity, Omundu, that you find on the internet. That level of experimentation. And it's not just one guy or two. It's a couple. It's a couple of them. And they are all, they have all placed me on a roulette table in a casino. And I am the tantamount, seeing as I was on the, I was on the center of it, seated in it. Like literally, like I was chilling, sitting on the table. And I was the thing that was going to be won after these random gambling buffoons who are betting win or lose. After their game is done, one of them would get to, I guess, cash me in. Ooh, guys. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. And the thing that they are fetishizing, the thing that they are salivating after, is the comprehensive thing that I am and my creativity. So the um, video that I did with the fallen angel depiction, it's stuff like that. And I'm like, but you don't know me. I'm not some kid, some school girl that you have a crush on in grade 11 when, when you're in matric. And every so often you see her from a distance in class. And so you obsess over her. And do strange things to yourself at home when you're thinking about her. I'm, I'm, I'm like so freaking distant. I'm far away. I'm like a whole grown woman. I'm 39. And for these people to consider me something feasible to grab. Ngare, I am a kid in their school. A fellow student in their high school. It's just so bizarre. It's like I'm so far away. I am somebody from the internet that you would never have met unless you had clicked on my channel. I'm that far away. And yet, they're betting using sorcery on me. That is how crazy. This world is. That's how crazy things are. That's how irrational people are. And when then they feel offended, insulted, like the shorts that I did with the man, um, the voice that I put on the avatar with the man, and talks and lamenting essentially against Corbella. These uh men who keep on like uh, I spoke about how it is like you know those shorts, man, that I did with the dude where I was lamenting about exploitative men like Janice and Jambres. Where the dude is like, I'm going to give you money, just take it. Yeah, those shorts. Some of these randos were offended, like exquisitely, by those shorts. You know, they were offended almost as if they listen to this, guys. Like, right? Y'all need to understand how crazy this world is. I don't know why anybody feels safe. Why people are not getting saved. I just, I do not know. <laughs> Yo, like, these people were offended almost as if, though, I worked with them in the same office building. And then one day they pursued me and then I made a decision upon rejecting them to then put posters up in the office of some satirical version or image of them teasing them for trying to get a woman that's out of their league. They are offended. Ingati, it's that kind of an insult, like at that level, like in that, at that close proximity to me. Like I was their colleague and I humiliated them in front of other colleagues and I also disrespected them to their face. Yo, I don't know you. I'm a total freaking stranger on the internet. Like it's like that's that's the level of mental illness that dwells in people in the occult. They feel entitled to respect from people that they find all the way across clouds on Facebook, on TikTok. 
literally it's 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 no wonder there are facebook murders tiktok murders like people out here thoroughly killing somebody else's daughter because they met her on tiktok and she did not appropriately respond to their direct messages like stalking complete strangers it's like the world is the, guys there was a time when celebrities were the ones who struggled with stuff like this yeah have you seen the movie the bodyguard with whitney houston that kind of like random stalkery feverish strange stuff because the woman is a star and of course she's gonna have every so often a couple like crazy people out here stalking her to a point of it being kind of scary do you understand what i'm saying yeah there are oddballs on in society that have been like that just on a loop perpetually all throughout the ages that out here pursue people that are way way too far too distant and entirely out of their league but the practice of occult magic has made the world so insane that there are more people like that freakish stalker in the movie the bodyguard over lay janes and joes regular people's daughters and sons like random people out here having never mind a social media aimed at perhaps uh, you know spreading a message just like a christian channel or being a doctor to share your tips and hints on how to take care of your body but like people who just have social media like a tiktok because you want to upload your your videos your random videos of you doing a stupid dance it's nothing hectic it's just for a small community you and your friends people that you know instagram it's for people that you know and if you get followed by strangers okay whatever you know what i mean but it's more private than it is a public persona you're not I, youtube is a, is a public persona because you are doing videos in order that people might follow you and that you might develop some kind of an influencer status but some places where you go to upload like for instance on facebook it's just because you like photos you take them and you put them up like instagram it's like that these people are disquieting people like those people that just want to put their pics online people that just want to put a reel on the internet their intention is not to mm, amass a hundred thousand followers it's just to be or to have a social media presence because that's what everybody's doing and then you find yourself literally scooping up a whole entire freaking stalker for like a whole decade and you don't know whether you're coming or going and involvement in the occult is achieving that in more and more people it has created more crazy bodyguard like stalkers against somebody's daughter with a facebook account somebody's daughter with an insta account somebody's daughter with a tiktok page and this chick is now out here being like literally stalked pursued followed around after school raped maybe murdered it's crazy like this is what is happening in the 21st century people are practicing sorcery in their backyards as a result they're getting demon possessed as a result they're feeling entitled to like comprehensive respect in got to this woman this woman this chick is married to this dude and so therefore you better respect me because that is what is right in the sight of god they feel entitled to respect in getting or i'm a boyfriend or a husband they feel entitled to respect like their boyfriends husbands or dads or big uncles you, you get my point big cousins like men that you award respect because you understand them as ones to whom you are honor or offer respect granted that they are a particular role in your life you don't owe every last random passing buffoon docility you you don't there are certain men that come into a woman's life that it is right and respectful for that woman to offer that man docility to humble themselves to be quiet to hold their words in to you know dish out a plate for them and wait for them to sit down before everybody can eat because you have a certain reverence a uh, respect for them due to the fact that like i said it's our dad or it's it's the husband or it's big brother and he's the one that is the sole breadwinner in the house there are certain men who have just earned that that respect but you don't just go to a taxi rank and start treating a taxi driver like you, the way you would treat your husband with that level of you know like uguzi toba man if you understand what i'm saying that that yeah uguzi toba is an it's an admirable thing to humble yourself in the climate of the testosterone of a man is indeed a good and a noble thing to do it is even recommended by the bible but you don't just award that level of general ubiquitous honor to every man yes respect them in the sense that saubon and goodbye respect them in the sense that you don't pass them shade attitude when they talk to you you respectfully respond back you don't give them a whole bunch of you know nasty vibes Mahala, just attitude no that's not okay but like to the point of like i said uguzi toba humble yourself to their every demand or humble yourself to their anticipations of you their expectations of you like a husband expects a wife 
at least in black culture, at least it ought be that way across the board anyway, to carry herself a particular way in his presence in order that her respect for him might be exuded, right? Like, forget the 21st century, but he, and he expects that, she, like, she's just gonna have an honor, like a humility in, in his presence, man, in his climate. I don't even know if I'm making sense. I don't know how to describe it. Like, you, you just feel a sense of, is, is everything in place in the house before your husband gets home? Like, every respectable wife and honorable wife and dignified wife would have that dwelling in them. If a man is en route home, you, you look around, check yourself to see if Lomundu is not going to be just walking into some, like, sprawled toys on the floor and, like, a cold environment that with windows open, uh, curtains unclosed and everything a mess. Like, there, there's, there's just a certain... Uh, women who who get it okay I'm, I'm not talking about everybody else in these feministic streets but women who get it get where i'm getting at who get that basic thing that 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 is the kind of uguzi beggar like to watch yourself and and how you conduct yourself because a certain man is coming through is coming by is walking into the room there is a certain checking of oneself by women in the climate of this these men because of their prior comprehension of who he is and the clout he carries in her space her heart do you understand this man, this, this, this thing, this clout that he carries, eh, yeah, man, relax, son. It does not belong to every random male in South Africa that this woman could potentially meet. She does not check herself the way that she would check herself in the climate of her husband. What's some random dude in the office? What the heck? Who are you? Like, let me make sure when I'm sitting in the office canteen that when, when Jabu comes through, that like proper everything is clean everything is neat everything is in its place and um things are not out of place because the guy cannot be coming here to sit down and go an untidy table i job boy 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 if you're not happy i go ask uh, the, the 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 cleaning staff lana if at all they can be at your bake and call seeing as that's their job to do uh that kind of service to you but it ain't mine i'm your colleague is that basic and if jabu feels offended in the office if he feels offended by you not checking yourself when he walks into the room heck he is arrogant and he's crazy. He's got like a psychosis. He's got a psychosis to expect that every woman uzozi toba to him in the office, at school, where he takes lectures after hours, like out there in the wilderness at the mall. Every woman must now be like, see, when he walks into the house, his wife be like, Baba Unjan. And, and he out to be expecting the, the teller at pick and pay to be calling him Baba Unjan. Now chill. Dude, like relax. Blom. Make like a flower. Hey, okay. Nah. Che, you check yourself. Because you got some problems out here with some hard knock delusions of grandeur. You have aggrandized yourself. Hey guys, that's the kind of stuff that results in different and random gender-based violence from strangers at Stratini with taxi drivers out just slapping some like strangers' daughters that they don't know because they felt like these women did not act a particular way. It produces a uh, just a feverish misogyny against women that don't owe men, certain certain men, that kind of uguzitoba. Basic respect is anticipated. It is right and it is cultural it's cultured to do that to offer men basic respect saubona unjan baba good okay mara to be at the mercy and at the beck and call of a man nje everywhere you go because you are tanda eman pumani pele get out disappear proper go to the bermuda triangle and just disappear make like those ships and those 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 airplanes never come back ain't nobody gonna miss you dog like proper hana mototo koko polango buti eh it's that basic mozo shanya gangaga to a point of expecting that level of submission from some woman's daughter that you found on the internet. And she has not even come into a space of agreement, sister girl, that we are under. She has not said, okay, sharp, I'll be your girl. She has not. I got komanga lo chiki. But purely because you've got strong feelings for her, the kinds that a husband has for a wife. You then now feel entitled to husbandly treatment. The chick has not said yes. Her daddy don't know you. Her mama don't know you. Don't nobody know you. Go jarating. How na moto? Ose kila kopa na luena job. Mara oso uba tatlompo yangu na batu. Eh, okay. It's the kind of randos that out you be killing women's daughters. Mama be like, but who was that boy? Nani kisa mozi? Umpula yetsi mwanyana. Umpula yetsi mwan. Here it is that this bugger done killed my daughter. I didn't even know him. My daughter did not bring this bugger home. But nah, dude was obsessed. And dude was actually using Gorobella spells in his kitchen. Dude got demon possessed. And dude, upon feeling entitled to Gwenzekile's affection, then goes and kills Gwenzekile when she's like, who are you? Yeah, proper. When when Gwenzekile is not like out here, crawling on the floor about to eat some dust, just worshipping this dude. This Oki then is killing her. 
for her lack of submission. I guess that's the problem with South Africa, is it not? It's, it's as diseased as it is because we've got a whole bunch of black men who feel that uh, entitled to that level of respect. Every man is entitled to respect. I will admit that. But there are layers, there are rungs, there are levels, there are echelons of respect that women where they vest themselves with them they clothe them because because of the title of the man in her life she he is sorry her dad he is her uncle he is her big brother he is her husband maybe even boyfriend who are you random crush on freaking instagram like who are you who are you when you don't know her and she does not award you that respect you don't even get to react like the dad when he's feeling disrespected by his wife and his daughters you don't get to react like the uncle. Nya telela, man. Nya telel. You don't. You don't get to act like a very upset fiance or a boyfriend. Angasi. Just some dude, nje. That that can like rightly feel some kind of way when he's being spoken to by his woman. Like heba I'm not for recreational dating. Blom, make like a flower. Okay, tuela ngo jola. Raf raf fela le fel. Mar. Even with the case of boyfriends, there is some kind of expected respect that ought come from the girlfriend. At least in black culture, that's how it ought. No, it's not black. It's, it ought to be that way across all women. It's just that we're living in a terrible society right now full of feminism. That's what's good. There is just a general uh, homage, if you want to call it that, a respect that women automatically sort of kind of bow themselves down to in the climate of men. It's eroded in the 21st century because people are crazy. Women are crazy. Everybody's crazy. But it is there. It is there. But it cannot be anticipated that that kind of homage, if you want to call it that, ought be paid everywhere across the show. A dad that is disrespected, rightly, upon being livid, upset, out here raising it as an issue, rightly gets to. He rightly gets to. Similarly too with the boyfriend, similarly too with the husband. Similarly too with the uncle that feels disrespected in a room full of crazy nieces. Yes, they get to raise it. They get to also, uh essentially effect what will be the the arm of retribution or punishment apart from abuse there is a way to handle a disrespectful situation as a man without being abusive condescending mistreaty you get my point you know it's a very thin line every so often you can be dealing with some deadbeat rando alpha male extreme extreme out your rolling in a chauvinism lifting his iron fist hand clobbering the woman or even speaking to her like she ain't Jack type thing. Those don't make sense. Ba 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 tofi tanka pafaya ko kwa zulu natal relax like relax blom make like a flower. There's a way to just put it out there that aonga zongtelela to a woman that is speaking a certain way to a man without him being out of his rank and his place in so effecting that ten amount of retribution or punishment or you get my point just handling a chick for being disrespectful there is a way around it and there is also a an entitlement to it by certain men in a woman's life like the dad like the uncle like the husband yeah but like when some rod wielding whip cracking buffoon from freaking youtube rocks up and starts to crack a daddy whip in the life of a girl that he met like two weeks ago on Instagram. Proper, that's you. You are disrespectful on that day. That kid does not have a prerogative to honor you like that. And you therefore also do not have a prerogative neither right. On that day you are committing crimes. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. To effect the whip that you would have a right to crack. If she was your girlfriend. If she had agreed to actually be with you if she had said all right cool what's the deal john jabu temba and stephen but like she didn't say yes if anything she's been kind of avoidant of you you're kind of creepy you're breathing down her neck personal space is an issue she's been out here blocking you on instagram like yeah your dms swipe right swipe left before reading them you can tell that she has not read them and then you have the brazen audacity to like turn green, purple, pink, and blue. All different kinds of colors of the rainbow. Out you are doing the LGBTQIA plus community with your theft of the rainbow. That's what's good. Mm. Because she dared talk to you some kind of way. Who are you? John, Temba, Pita, and Jabu, Stephen. Or rather should I say Stevel, because you're crazy evil. Who are you? Who are you? Allow me to just put this out there, okay? Especially black men, like proper. South Africa. Not South Africa, Africa. Black people black world let me just speak to africa because i think 
you know, these females in the US or in the West sometimes can get, you know, tarnished by Western culture to not have those African nesses within them, very rooted way of being. So I, I shall speak to Africans, African women, African men, frankly, you would be lying to yourselves through your teeth and all that jazz if you said that we are not among the most respectful women on the planet that are maintained still largely in a old school womanhood with with old school like rudimentary roles that are still rooted in us despite all the acquisition of careers and everything and what have you we are still very fundamental in the way that we operate we are still very much trad girlfriends trad wives trad all that jazz African women are very respectful. Women and girls, very respectful of men. And they are also very honoring of their gender roles from Fantuka. Biblical roles. They still largely attach to them. Therefore, this rise in misogyny in the black community against women. I don't understand. Uh, in Africa. In Africa. for In America, you know, they can be feisty. They've been watered down i don't know what's going on there in western culture a lot of the black women are like whoa girl that's a bit extreme uh that stuff wouldn't fly down here in these streets but anyway uh, god bless america let's move on type setup thing but in africa our men's misogyny i like guys i get we i don't know where it's coming from even when these women go for their own their careers and whatnot they they still dedicate their bourgeois and might to serving men it's just an african thing i grew up seeing it I see it with my, I saw it with my little sister and she's a Gen Z. There is a way in, there, there is something in African women that is still maintained in old school, traditional, um, womanhood. Do you understand what I'm saying? One second. Old school, traditional womanhood, uh, is still largely maintained in Africa. It is like, even in South Africa is, I believe, one of the most disrespectful African nations in the world. Like, at all. Uh, when it comes to just it thinking that it defecates ice cream. I have said that time and time again. There is a pomp in, in South Africa about its people. And frankly, it needs to be handled. It needs to be massacred and ransacked. Uh, but like, uh, despite even that general issue that we have as a pompous African nation, there is still a humility to gender roles by African women, South African women, African women at large, yeah, in a way that causes a crease in my forehead concerning the misogyny every so often and the chauvinism of African men against African women. They act like we're these hard knock feministic randos that you find in the West. We are not. We are not. We have not been taken by the tsunami of that way, of that, what do you call this thing? of that uh, movement we haven't been taken over by it what has happened however in africa is that women have gained economic strength in spite of gaining the economic strength they have maintained their respect for gender roles so essentially our men are just greedy it's that basic they're upset because of the strength that women have economically because they cannot lay claim to being upset because of our disrespect, because that is a lie. It is a lie from the pit of hell. They would have to admit it to themselves. And go and live in the US for 10 years. Go and live in Europe, in, in Australia for 10 years, Europe for 10 years. They would come back with hungry look, lips chapped and everything of honor, respect and submission in those spaces, in the way that they likely would get treated by women in the office, the way that they would get treated by women at home, at school, at play, everywhere. And especially in relationships that you would come back parched longing to find yourself an african wife because of what it is that you will have made made observation of the disparities that dwell in western culture versus african culture we are still largely submissive and largely rooted to our roles so they're disquiet with us anyway evidence is agreed in a rapacity in them that is speaking to their entitlement to our lack, our want. They want to keep on doing everything for us. So it basically fosters or it musters up in their bones. Do you understand what I'm saying? Abuse anyway, even when a woman is submissive. Abuse anyway, or a lack of love, a lack of respect anyway, even when a woman is doing everything, bending over backwards to try and cater to the needs of this man. And now when you can't satisfy this person, what do you do? Well, there's like nothing you can do. We, we find ourselves abused. We get beaten. We are the most devastated single demographic black women in South Africa. You know, the, the statistics for gender-based violence. The country is shy to make it clear 
that the most afflicted demographic in gender-based violence is black. It is not ubiquitous across colored women, white women, Indian women, etc. Yes, there are white women that get killed. We had Riva Stienkamp, etc. But the majority of women that are out here perishing under gender-based violence or being raped or getting beaten up or all that jazz are coming from the black community. And people are shy to make mention of this. They cannot ubiquitously apply it to everybody because frankly, it is afflicting largely black women and it is gratuitous. It is unwarranted, unwarranted, it's unfounded. The reason why they're doing this to us cannot truly be identified, guys. Even with a magnifying glass out here, carefully looking at it as, a, as under even a microscope, it does not make any sense at all. Not even in the slightest. The only reason that I can highlight is a woman's economic strength and prosperity and that is the reason why i keep on getting come up against like no man's business harassed by some entitled no-brainers do you understand what i'm saying to give them my love and my affection because they just want to do for me what it is that a woman must be done for anyway let me provide for you and i'm like as in i never had a problem with me but being provided for by a man or the prospect of it i've always only ever taken care of myself historically and guys i mean i the type of woman not even my ex has bachelored me i've always had my own but when i came to christ i was willing to submit under the prospect of being comprehensively provided for by a husband while i am a stay-at-home wife i was prepared to do that do you understand what i'm saying i was prepared to do that I was prepared to do that but then i got thrown into this situation i got thrown into this obscurity and upon being thrown into this obscurity i made an observation of how it is that men are not trying to love me they're trying to rule me they are trying to conquer me they are trying to overwhelm me with their authority in a way that is like an iron fist they're trying to be despots dictators in my life and not so much love me the way that christ loved the church they're trying to control me that's when it became daunting and hella freaking scary for me to not be able to provide for myself. I was prepared to do it at some point and give some Christian men a chance. But then I got induced into my bones a severity of post-traumatic stress from simply making an observation of how men react when a woman has nothing. When she has nothing, they insist she stays with nothing. They insist that she is maintained in poverty so they can be the only ones catering to their needs. The dude in America bewitched everything on the left and on the right of me to ascertain that he will forever be my provider without me being able to do anything for myself. That bugger was in the US. So perhaps maybe he was raised in that kind of rancid culture where it is that you know the African roots are being wasted away in the Africans they're in. But then I started to, in, not started, I had already in the run-up to meeting that guy in America, had my own experiences with South African men since I got thrown into a squalor and, uh, and, and, and abject poverty. I found myself getting harassed by black men, do you understand? That hated the idea of me regaining my economic strength. It was not that I was disrespectful and so I deserved to be poor. It was that I was a woman and so I ought to be provided for comprehensively by a man. And while that would have been okay, if at all it was not forced on me, it's not okay when it is the only outcome for me, when I have no other options. On that day, then I'm, like I said, under a despot. I am a prisoner. On that day, I am a captive. I am a hostage. And if at all I accommodate a man who is claiming to cater to my needs in this ecosystem, I am suffering from a severity of Stockholm Syndrome. He is my hostage taker and I ought come free. That created in me, therefore, an extremity of so much trauma that I cannot for the life of me merely just sit around waiting for a guy to provide for me because the ones that I have been dealt a bad blow by the past decade have expected me to stay poor and them take care of me. It's what I've been flee from, flee, fleeing from and I only got to see those flames when I lost everything. So it's like their true colors were hidden when I was economically strong and then as soon as I lost everything they showed that this is how a woman should be, or at least this is how, what they believe a woman should be. And I'm like, what is this, the Middle East? Next thing I'm actually rocking a hijab? Like, what's next? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, that is the, the issue that I'm finding here. And the sad and disquieting thing about African uh, African men, this is all I got to say to you, okay? Da -da 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 -da. You don't know what you got till it's gone, like proper. You don't know what you got till it's gone. You do not know what you have until it's gone because the honor and the respect and the reverence that and the homage that African women automatically pay to African men is hella rare. It's rare. Go anywhere else in the world. You are going to struggle to find it. Do you understand? Our respect of men is still rooted in us from Fantuka. 
and yet we are the single most unloved demographic of women across the world to a point where we have been given a title angry black woman we are the baby mamas all over the world but not the wives we are the ones with the worst rap sheet black women across the planet and yet we respect men i'm not going to say the most because that would then put other women in other cultures out of the water right but we still maintain old school roles we do there is no reason there is no excuse there is no understanding that can be rightly gauged with any level of respectability as to why our men are so resentful of us there's nothing other than tabayore we're making money my ex-boyfriend the amount of shade that he used to pass me because of my strength i missed his people i missed his male people his dad his boys he would change his character his personality in front of them in dealing with me and he was hostile towards me in a way that he wasn't hostile towards me when we were together the two of us because he was trying to show Ubuti Ubani that is cracking the whip here what was going on over there the thing that was happening with my ex was him having a woman that is respectful of him but that he wanted to show everybody he is running and ruling and conquering when he's in the midst of them to a point of treating me a lot better when it's just the two of us he wanted to prove to men that he was still running the show so essentially we get abused not because we're unsubmissive but because we are able to take care of ourselves no other reason no other reason no other reason that is why we are out here getting lambasted by these randos and so every so often there are stupid ones on the internet that find women that they don't know from a bar of soap and expect the level of homage that is paid to a dad or a husband and even with the case of the dad or the husband do you understand what i'm saying the dad can effect some kind of punishment on disrespectful daughters or effect some kind of corrective endeavor on a wife that has just disrespected him insofar as it was within the parameters of respectability and non-abuse do you know what i'm saying yeah he gets to do that because he is a husband and he is a father he gets to but then it, it becomes wild and incontinent and animalistic frankly when then he decides to i guess bring out a punch bring out a knife and stab the woman 10 times because she disrespected him that then makes him an unacceptable creature a menace a homicidal beast that ought to be put very far away and like forever that makes him an like just a, an utterly irresponsible responder to disrespect there are men who get that thank god that there is a way to respond to disrespect that does not abuse and then there are those who just don't there are the creeps the incontinent weird buffoons that have got no internal locus of control all they do is just blurt out incontinently their wildest fantasies and imagine that they're putting a woman in her place when they slap her or when they speak down to her or when they partake in some kind of abuse verbal emotional whatever you get my point you you catch the drift right yeah the the ones i'm talking about right now are on that extreme not only are they ought not not only ought they not feel entitled that's the first thing to this homage this respect this uguzi tall by this humility not only are they in no position to expect it from some chick they met on instagram they are over and above it the kind of dude that even if he was your daddy even if he was your husband even if he was your uncle or your big brother yeah <laughs> he would not have a right to beat you for it he would not have a right to kick you into a moving train for it throw you off a building put 36 live rounds in your chest after the first two already killed you that's what i'm trying to explain right now not even an entitled to that kind of respect dad is right to respond with homicide or assault not even the uncle that's been disrespected by some nieces has a right to respond Gampama. not even that guy there is a way when you are rightly placed to respond to disrespect from women when you're rightly placed so you're the dad these guys not only are they wrongly placed to expect that respect because who are you taxi driver but they are also also wife beaters chick beaters because it's not wives they're woman beaters they're the kinds of people to unleash live rounds into like i said strangers daughters on the internet like proper some woman's kid is actually passing away because some freak that met her she didn't meet him he met her he saw he found her profile on tiktok mm. followed her around earmarked her pursued her she looked at him on some no thank you and he decided that she's gotta die essentially he's a psychopath a sociopath some strange erroneously placed in society weird anomalous freak that ought not exist at all on the planet 
especially not among women. And yet, he feels entitled to some woman's daughter and some man's daughter that he found on Instagram, found on YouTube. He feels entitled to the kind of respect that a husband would feel to, from his wife. And when he doesn't get that respect, mm -hmm. unlike a responsible husband, he then responds with a punch, responds with a machete, responds with several gunshot wounds in the skull. This is a 21st century full of people teeming at the folds with demon possession so exquisite that all they can do is bring about the very end of the world. The very literal end of the world. This is an extinction level crisis. All of these randos concocting spells in their kitchens. Out here putting together some fenugreek and some onion. And then insisting that that's going to bring a woman into his life. And when then she doesn't respond appropriately, then it's like, this is tit for tat. You better prostitute yourself to me or else. Or else what? Or else what? Little doggy dog, Rottweiler, whatever you want to be, Jack Russell, that don't know me from a bar of soap. Or what? If I don't want you, you are no one to me. You're not my cousin. You're not my brother. You are not my dad. You are not my uncle. You are not my boyfriend. You are not my husband. You are owed no other respect, but if at all I were to see you in public, a greeting, Salbon, and move on. I'm not going to speak to you down. When you communicate with me, if you shell on me, I will say, no, Temba, I'm not interested. I won't say it to you with attitude. But if Temba, you're not the kind of person that takes no for an answer cordially and just kind of backs down because, you know, you win some, you lose some. If you're the kind of dude to then go back to your apartment, grab your, your 59 millimeter, whatever. Grab some kind of a weapon, a machete, I don't know, a cross and a bow. Angazi, samurai, bring a sword, okay, to the office and just chop a woman's head off. Yeah, wait, wait, when you do stuff like that, I apologize. You are Ted Bundy. You're Moses Itole. You are Hannibal Lecter. You are the amiable horror. You are some strange, freaky, creepy, ominous, serial killer of women. The women of which that you killed didn't even know you. They didn't know you. Don't you see? That's exactly what you are. You're the thing that goes bump in the night of every last woman. Every mother warns their daughter against you. Every mother tells their daughter to not take certain routes back home from school because of freaks like you. People that don't know women. And yet you feel entitled to their respect and their love. And when they say no, because you pursued them on the bus home, you then follow them home and kill them. You're the creep, serial killer that a woman did not know. And then you ended her. That's what you are. You're not dad. You are not husband. You are not cousin. You are not big brother. You are not even colleague. You are just a freak. When you find a woman you are interested in on the internet and then in feel and then feel entitled to her respect. And then when she calls you out for what you are, because that's what society does, is it not? I'm a satirist, okay? Yeah, I'm full of parody. I make light of very serious matters. So every so often I do a little avatars in a very comical fashion, animation, and I tease the lunacy of the planet around me. It's a way I cope. It is a way for me to deal with an otherwise very severe situation in a way that is, you know, easier to take in one's stride. Mm. I try to make it more palatable to the taste buds, otherwise nobody would listen to me. The stuff I experience on a daily basis is so severe, it's so macabre that most people would walk away from me if at all I did not light heart it a little bit. If I did not make it a little less extreme to the taste buds, most people wouldn't listen to me. If I'm actually always talking about how a guy's on a dead spell, how a guy's on a corobella, this, that, without adding jokes to it, I would highly likely lose all my subscribers. Anybody that keeps on watching my videos would stop because I just, I mean, it's just, it's too hard to keep listening to somebody that's always in a lot of pain. Have you been around that friend that's always getting like, you know, uh, harassed, abused, or uh, this poverty, Now you know how hard it is to just, when you see them, you sometimes even want to avoid them because, oh, they're going to talk about how there's no bread at home again. Mm. It's hard to deal with a person with a bad, bad, bad story. So I use my Jocko's flair, the comedic edge that God gave me to light up a very dire situation that I am in right now just because of how I make light out of a very dire situation. These random buffoons are feeling offended, insulted. They're feeling offended. I mean, it's, it's what I do. It's what I do. What would you do in, 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 in the world, in a society where you are living and there is a serial killer among you? you? You talk about how it is that some creep is killing some females. Yeah, you talk about it. You raise it. You highlight it. You raise awareness that women might avoid certain routes home, like I said earlier, that 
people might make sure to double check their surroundings before they get in their cars make sure that they check at the back that there's nobody out there just lurking in their backseat waiting to just stab them from the back mm, that's what's good that's what happens when a serial killer is lurking in the town right there's lots of awareness that's created news networks covered that women might watch their backs or men depending on who, what the serial killer is into killing mm, that's what's good that's what i'm doing i'm creating awareness for random buffooneries of incendiary serial killers sending women to eternity far too early given that they don't know christ yet and they're killing them just because they found them on social freaking media do you understand what i'm saying i am a news network anchor lady creating right awareness as i ought i am like a colleague in the office after telling my other colleague hey be careful before you go in your car just make sure you check in the back seat and everything before you go in there with a flashlight to ascertain that there's nobody in the back seat because hey there's some back seat serial killer doing the rounds in johannesburg that's who i am just creating awareness but you see the thing about creating awareness uh somebody that's very influential to create such awareness as this against certain people the person against whom you are warning is going to feel offended some kind of way even though they're a creep yeah when they're being warned when people are being warned against them i apologize mm. When the world is either being warned against you, you are not going to feel like the star of the show. You're not going to feel like an amazing, awesome dude. You're going to feel like the creep that must lurk in the corners. But unfortunately for me, I just so happen to be the news anchor lady that is creating awareness that is not being viewed. Her news network is not being viewed. Her channel is not being viewed. She's severely underrated. And so for those reasons, because she is underrated, uh, the, the stupid buffoonery of a serial killer now feels entitled to my blood. My blood. Like, yo. I am creating awareness against this random incendiary activity going on on the part of occult men that are just grabbing anything they want. They find ladies on the internet, some of them are HIV positive, teeming, coursing through their bloodstream are just a myriad of STDs. All different kinds of things that can make a lady nether regions itch for 20 years. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, stuff that can make a woman infertile is coursing through their bloodstream and they're insisting on sleeping with your daughter. They, they, they're like, that's what's going on. That's what's happening. And they are prospering to sleep with your daughter. You know why? Because they dizzy her. Hypnotically putting spirals in their eyes. With love spells. That is a newsworthy topic. And I am highlighting it. That daughters might be protected. And in so highlighting it. A serial killer is feeling disrespected. What are you doing? You tried to target me the same way that you targeted somebody that did not quite see what was coming coming. Yeah. And now I must respect you uh, yeah sure but not ted bundy it's in moses it not the nazarite serial killer bugger i booger understand if it's jack the ripper i ain't trying to respect none of that i'm running and just because i created awareness in my channel very satirically because i used you know animated explainers and all that jazz you think Uti, it's only a matter of time before you get to me just because i'm so jocose and so uh charming if you want to call it that in the way that i deliver my content you anticipate that that must mean that you can ultimately get to me you think i'm a sweet little goyana girl well if you think i'm sweet goyana more like a taste i'm like i'm like an eel like a, a jellyfish if, if you think I'm, I'm, I'm sweet you know what an electric eel is like it's so cute it's so beautiful it's glowing in the ocean jellyfish too yeah but they can kill is that basic do not look at me being a precious looking beautiful flower you know what i'm like as well those those multicolored froggies that you find in the amazon yeah touch one and die is that basic i might be very fluorescent on the outside and pretty looking but i'm lethal because if you touch me literally it is poisonous to you so do not look at like i said my fluorescent colors my animations the jocosity the satire the fact that i use so much joking in my ministry i'm funny the fact that i pinch my cheeks and bring forth a blush do not look at my girly girl disposition hey the stuff that I am, generally, the light-hearted, like, satirical explainer of an otherwise very dire situation lady, do not mistake me for innocuous. I am not harmless. I am fatal because I belong to the God of the universe and I am speaking of very important matters. And I'm also highlighting something that ought to be highlighted. Yeah, the fact that you, psychopath, are in the streets lurking and you are yet to be caught. And so somebody got to create awareness. Otherwise, our daughters are going to keep on getting out, aren't they? They're going to keep on getting ransacked. And seeing as there's nobody out here, prepared to keep on talking about this day and night, bantering and down the throats of people and the minds of people. I'm going to do it. It's, it's a thankless profession. We get it. It's a thankless job. But if I don't do it, who will? If I don't do it, who will? 
I'm a victim of it, so I mean, it's especially near and dear to me. Yeah, it's really close, because I'm a victim. I'm a victim too. I have been scouted by ugly little seedy eyes with a menacing disposition and a grimacing smile on the side. A schmuck, if you will. Mm. Looking at me salivating with blood dripping down their knives after having strewn a trail of cadavers behind them. And now I'm next. And I must just take it. Why? Because we know that. No, dude. Our monnaons are blah 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 Cause when I ungagara umbogoto, you can come on a mountaintop bashing your chest. Hi there, buddy. You are not a man. If you are out here killing some females for refusing to date you, you're the creep lurking in the corners that rapes women, takes what you want, and society is warning against you. Society is menaced by you. Society is afraid of you. Society is locking their doors against you. Other men don't like you because you are slathering their daughter's blood in the streets. You are the anomaly, the serial killer that men and women alike are disinterested in keeping in the streets. But Ani Bonagali, as such, right? Why? Because you're chilling in corporates, nine to fives, talking in every single day, gathering a salary to a point where you can feel like it's necessary for you to say to me that this is tit for tat, Karabo. Either give me your nether regions that I might rub myself against them or else. Or else what? That is just the thing. This job that you have, these jobs that you have in these corporates where you are working have made you feel like you can just intimidate the living daylights out of an unemployed Christian woman until she finally prostitutes herself to you. And then you are using sorcery to slap her into submission because you're gonna impoverish her, impoverish her. Do you understand what I'm saying? Until she says yes. There is a dude that I gave a chance to be my boyfriend. It didn't last more than three weeks. Back when I was, uh, like maybe like 2019, yeah, 1920, yeah, working in Rosebank, picked me up after work because I used to work with Rosebank part time when I was studying at VIT, so I think I was 19 or 20. Mm. The dude, I was prepared to make, let him be my man, type thing. I thought he was good people's. I met him, he, he, he liked me, he saw me in the store where I was working, and that's where we exchanged numbers. And I thought, ooh, I think I might have a boyfriend. Mm. Cute dude. First day, he picks me up, drops me off at home. Cool, whatever. Next time, picks me up, and I'm thinking we're gonna go eat dinner, lunch, whatever, at dinner. It was at night, right? Because I was working up until the evening. He takes me to a shack, got Alex, which was obviously not where he stayed, but like some joint of one of his boys. And that was the first issue. Okay, so I'm in a shack, got Alex, and I'm not at Panarotti's Pizza eating. Uh, I don't know what's going on here. I did not scream or wince or complain. Because I was scared I was going to get raped. I did not complain. I acted cool. I acted cool the whole time. So that this dude would not get aggressive on me. Not only did he take me to a shack in Alex. But then he opened a laptop. Right? And, and literally made me watch pornography. He made me watch pornography. He whipped out a laptop. And made me watch porn. As the, I was so uncomfortable. I had never seen those images before i was not the kind of person to choose to watch porn myself that was the first time i actually saw porn yo guys yes i did not know what to do he was trying to get me sexually charged i looked around and i was like my mom is going is is, is going to to complain that i'm home too late can you please take me back home and he was like okay he took me to some body's shack that he knew and he made me watch porn to sexually arouse me so that he could get me to have sex with him in that filthy environment that I didn't even understand. I had never even been in a shack in my life until that day. Mm -hmm. That man, that dude, he never saw me again after that. But that dude, every single time, these filthy men slap me with Korobela. I get flash visions of him. That's how God sees him. Men that will take you that they will open up a laptop and show you pornography so you can sleep with them because that's exactly how Gorobella works you get all these licentious dreams they're very sexually charged you're suddenly all erotically aroused in the climate of some dude you don't even know or it's some guy from the office some dude from school some dude you get my point and it's like but i never used to look at Caesar like that yeah Caesar is out here making you watch porn in a dream so that you can look at him the next day in the office and think he's attractive because you had a very steamy dream about him the night before. That's what Corbella looks like. They make you watch porn so you can ultimately sleep with them. But just like with me, I found it creepy. I found it eerie. Plus, why am I in a shack? And I told him I got to go home and he dropped me off. Thank God I wasn't raped. The Lord has always been with me even before I got saved, even with my indiscretions. 
I was not the best filter of men back then. And it appears that salvation changed that, didn't it? I'm still drawing them though. That's unfortunate. But these buffoons gotta be called out for what they are. They're perverts. They're lurking serial killers in corners. And they've got a strategy now to harass, ransack, and pilfer. It's not even pilfering. Pilfering is a theft of small things. It's just grand larceny. That's what it is. Women's bodies. They are committing atrocious acts of theft against women's bodies. They're taking their dignity. And there's atrocious acts of theft. theft because sometimes baba siya, basari, banakari, STDs, some of which are incurable. Incurable. And this bugger will have slipped in, slithered his way in, like Janice and Jambri's written about in 2 Tim Timothy 3. Yeah, he will have slithered in this, this mongrel, this monstrous buffoon, this menacing grimace. Yeah, mm. this gargoyle, this gorgon, gargoyle, gargoyle. Gorgon is a, an, a mad woman like Medusa. A eh? will have done so using Gorbel. They will have dizzied women, caused women to believe that they've got genuine emotions for them, genuine feelings. Induced lust in a woman that did not used to look at him that way. Next thing, she slept with a man that's given her three STDs, including HIV. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that can drive any 21-year-old to suicide because she hasn't even started to live yet. And yet here it is that I'm sick with all these multiple diseases because I slept with Teppo. Teppo almost She met him on Facebook and he convinced her even though initially she didn't want him. And the ones who don't appropriately respond, and by appropriate really, I'm putting that in quote marks, by inappropriate response I'm speaking, the ones who are reticent anyway the ones who are unprepared anyway to be with them despite the pull of the washing up on their, jer their jerseys to be with these dudes the ones who resist the witchcraft because it's not just christians trust me there are women in the world who realize that naked lady like some idiot on the internet i don't like him why why do i have a crush on him all of a sudden and they completely ignore him there are people who resist even though they don't know god the ones who don't allow themselves to get pulled gutty washing they're the ones that then are met with the wrath of these entitled men who feel like they're your daddy yeah they're the ones that get killed. They're the ones that get blocked. They that, that suddenly get the kinds of spells that mess with a woman's career, a woman's business, a woman's this, a woman's that. Yeah, they will come at you below the belt. One good or some tit for tat, you will take it and gun. And that's what I've been dealing with. And unfortunately for me, the Lord showed me that these randos are 25 year olds. Was Tupac not 25 when he died? They are Gen Zs. Gen Z's. The ones that are doing this to me are Gen Z's. It's like they're running a freaking criminal syndicate. You know how gangsters usually are very young? Yeah. They're like a little mafia gang. Mm. Whole bunch of skivvies for Pablo Escobar. Yeah. That's what's good. They're, they're young. They're young. 25, 26 year olds. Are you experimenting in this regard? Because, you know, while they're still young, having fun, all they want to do is just hit that. And they're saying, to Isco Guanesna 39 on the internet. That take it or leave it. This is tit for tat. Nothing is for mahala. Oyangi Delanja. Who who are you? Okay, Omang. I go say. Who are you? I don't know you. They are disgusting, but they feel like they can speak that way to a woman because she rejected them, and they are prepared to also block careers. And in the worst case scenario, there is one among them who has also conjured up a death spell. A death spell. The dude in America is four years older than me. He's forty-four this year. He's he would be like he He was similar to them. That evil dwells even in the younger generation. That's why Geratzamai, I was going home. The rapture is nigh. It's knocking at the door, frantically, bashing it down, even with a bomb. Never mind. With with a kick. Mm. We are going home. Because if Gen Z's with nothing to lose. So no, not nothing to lose, sort of, but Gen Z's with so much to lose, with so much of a future still to grab. With clean slates. They haven't had children, they haven't gotten married, all that jazz. If a man that can basically clean up his act so he can acquire a life in the sense, can at the meager tiny age of 25 do such dastardly stuff. I suka, there's no future. The bugger was America, the 44 year old, he's a, he'd, already, he'd had already ruined his life. And then now he's suffering from midlife crisis and he wishes he could turn back the hands of time because he thinks he's R. Kelly. Yeah, that bugger. One can sort of kind of sometimes maybe understand why he's acting like this and using so much witchcraft. But these ones are experimental. They're greedy. They're just going to go to the casino and like to gamble every single weekend. A future that frankly has not even yet been acquired. They found this fiery weapon called witchcraft and they played around with it in the, w in the wilderness. And they got addicted and demon possessed and gained so much ugly, filthy stuff through it. They gained people's children. They gained women. They slept with them left them for dead afterwards the one night stand they have been gaining little pockets of money but to say i guess sorcery and so because this gambling thing paid off at some point they got a jackpot ding 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 now they use it obsessively addictively even at their own peril even when they have met a christian woman 
that keeps on warning them, Unizo Boda Zinja, you will pass away. You will die. They, they feel like they've come into some fast money and with no wisdom because the passions of youth are eating them alive like maggots. That's what's good. Yeah. Mm. They are busy out here scoring, scoring, scoring big on the internet, getting women. Gumnand. They've got money. They, 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 they like confetti. They're pouring it out in clubs because of how they're getting it so easily through sorcery. And now they're using it, like I said, on women on the internet. It's a whole syndicate, a crime syndicate, like a whole embezzlement syndicate teaming at the folds with some youngsters. Yeah. Now they've met with a Christian woman and because they have gay given themselves a pomp and arrogance and a delusion of grandeur, thanks to everything that they've acquired with sorcery so far, now they out to imagine that it's feasible for them to just, you know, drop like a domino and get to me and I'm playing hangman. A woman, just make her die because I don't give fun. Nobody says no to me. Who gave them that pomp to bash their chest on the mountain top like King Kong to say no one says no to me? Addition to sorcery that gave them so much pride and arrogance. That now Abasazi bone, they can't even see that some women don't owe you respect, Bagawai, because you just some squatani from the street that she don't know. All she needs to do is greet you. And if she doesn't want to comma you like proper, she gets to say no. But now you're that squatani that's been made a rapist. Why? Because witchcraft has made you mad. Witchcraft has made you crazy. So because of dabbling with sorcery, now you just feel entitled to taking everything, Jefela. Everything that comes your way. Telling yourself, Wutimina, no one says no to me. Kind of dude. To out you flip a woman's life upside down because you asked her out and she didn't say yes to you that's what happens with men in the occult they drain the occult they develop a bravado a delusion of grandeur they aggrandize themselves following which they then get really abusive out there without self-checking because they're demon possessed get the sorcery they've been taken away their minds are gone and the lord showed me that seeing as they're into gambling and they're outside uh, some kind of a casino in Las Vegas like Tupac. They're about to get shot. They're going to die like Tupac. Young. At the height of their careers. At the height of their glory. At their, at their prime. At the height of their prime. When people are still expecting so much out of them. And then boom, boom. Bang, bang. You are dead outside of a casino. At just the tiny age of 25. I've been warning you. I've been warning you buggers. But the fact that you are all over the show being Moses Etole, little serial killers, roaming around these streets out here, massacring Johannesburg. Yeah, the fact that you are the menaces to society that you presently are is also telling off the times that we're living in. You are like Janice and Jambres in 2 Timothy 3. Arrogant, pompous, buffoons, worming your ways into the lives of weak-willed women seeking to burden them with passions. You have yet to get Izetri. You are yet to get HIV. At this rate, however, you will inevitably get it. And you are going, hitting the ground running for the despised future that the 44-year-old buffoon in America has. You are begging for it. You are begging for destruction. And you feel entitled to everything. Shame. You are young. And so you're still very handsome. And so for those reasons, some of these cherries automatically salivate after you because you're still so good looking. But it's the ones that don't want you that you grab gadi washing. Lankut. Lebanga gadi washing. Because you are abusive. I'm your daddy. Shut up. O enye nto. Because you're a serial killer. You are Jack the Rip. You are creeps, guys. That's all you are. And the fact that. Ninga slugme za kap slunga njena. Umfazo na 39. Ay, nyabazwe la gaya abo 22. Gaba utwe la baba na 25. Gaba utwe di di takazalo na gadi utwe. Because more so, do you disrespect them? More so, if you can disrespect a woman twice your age, how much more disrespectful are you towards women your peers? And you out in the streets, these streets, dragging them through the mud. And you out in these streets, dragging them, roofling them in the club. Proper. Right now, you're using spiritual roofies because she's, she's at a distance. But how many of those pills do you sprinkle in their drinks? If you can uh, attempt so horribly. There's no help coming from Satan, but what he's about to do now is kill you. Wale feta, wale fukuta, wale fufura, sinza ni liba nyane, lile shanya, le dawisi se kitaba horle tote easy money, ill gotten gain. Go read Proverbs 3. Is it Proverbs 3? Yeah, I believe it's Proverbs 3. Or Proverbs 1 or 2. Where it speaks about ill-gotten gain. The Proverbs at all. That you might stay your hands from this insanity. It doesn't end well. My ex-boyfriend, Lena on a shanti to gas pizza parafini mara at like in his early 30s. Get chaleta na itolaka okal. Temmonen gaje ko umu puto haka kang. Ong patla hai and lo. I guess bias kelem sa hai. 
you will inevitably end up like these middle-aged men back Kenya. Hard knock. Bagatango shaladi 22 year olds asaba watling. Eh, you are going there hitting the ground running. Because la tella today, there is no glory in crime, in sin. It does not pay. Literally, it does not pay. And unfortunately for you guys, you are not even going to get to see the, the fate of die random middle-aged men. Basanyang baku langka jeku. Basuaren ke... They're spinning on the spot and got to because they can't believe how they squandered their youth. They can't believe it. They are shocked out of their minds that they wasted so much time pursuing rubbish, like just dust. The poho follow do to feel entitled to basadi that are not yours. La shanya la kula the serial killer. You are psychopaths. Do a better thing. Nangutra repenta ngkuheleng. And as for your death spells, dala dala zinjandin. I want to bang Zama. Nobody has prospered. All that's going to happen now ever is that you are going to die. Let this be a poignant warning. Tupac Lankutra. You will pass away like him outside of your little casinos where you're gambling. Don't say I didn't warn you. I'm signing out in Christ's name, Quen K. Peace.